The Sahara sun doesn't just shine on Burkina Faso, it scrutinizes. It beats down on a landlocked nation with a history written in gold dust and revolutionary fervor. Today, a new chapter is being drafted, not in the corridors of former colonial powers, but in the stark light of a desperate, daring gamble. Captain Ibrahim Traoré, the world's youngest head of state, sits in a sparse office in Ouagadougou. His uniform is simple, his eyes are tired, but his vision stretches far beyond the immediate threat of jihadist violence. He knows the old playbooks have failed. He knows the promises of the West often come with chains. So he is looking south. He is looking to Zimbabwe. His gamble rests on the shoulders of one of the most controversial inventors on the African continent, Maxwell Chikambutso. To understand the enormity of this bet, you must first feel the pressure bearing down on Burkina Faso. Every headline speaks of siege. Terrorist groups control nearly 40% of the country. Millions are displaced, living in makeshift camps, their lives suspended by violence. The economy, tied to gold and cotton, is strangled by insecurity. The previous government, a French ally, was ousted by Traoré's junta for its perceived incompetence and subservience. Traoré's promise was not just security, but sovereignty. True sovereignty. The kind that isn't just a flag, but a functioning state that answers to its own people. This requires a foundation the country lacks, energy independence. Burkina Faso's power grid is a fragile thing. Large swathes of the country lie in darkness. Fuel for generators is expensive and vulnerable to supply chain collapse. How can you build industries, secure cities, or power hospitals under these conditions? The traditional answer would be a loan from the International Monetary Fund. It would come with conditions, austerity, privatization, and policies written in Washington or Paris. Troy has rejected this path outright. He calls it neo-colonialism. So, with conventional routes closed, he has turned to the unconventional. He has placed a bet on a man who claims to defy the very laws of physics. Enter Maxwell Chikambutso. In a workshop outside Harare, surrounded by skeptical whispers and fervent belief, Chikambutso works. He claims to have built generators that produce electricity from nothing more than radio frequencies. He unveiled a prototype electric car he says is powered by a green energy system he cannot fully disclose. He speaks of a battery that never needs recharging. To the scientific establishment, these are red flags. The first law of thermodynamics is clear. Energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transformed. A generator with no apparent fuel source? It sounds like a perpetual motion machine, the dream of charlatans and hobbyists for centuries. Major journals dismiss him. Physicists scoff. The government of the late Robert Mugabe once arrested him, some say for operating without a license, others whisper for threatening existing energy cartels. His company, Seth Holdings, exists in a nebulous space, more known for its spectacular demonstrations than peer-reviewed papers. This is the man Ibrahim Traoré has invited to Burkina Faso. Not for a lecture, but for a partnership. The announcement sent shockwaves through diplomatic and scientific circles. It was seen as either a masterstroke or a catastrophic folly. Traoré's government signed a memorandum of understanding with Chikambutso's organization. The plan is audacious to manufacture these groundbreaking energy generators and electric vehicles inside Burkina Faso. Imagine the symbolic power of that. A nation under embargo, criticized by the West, choosing to partner with another African innovator, also marginalized by the mainstream. This is pan-Africanism not as a political slogan, but as a technological and industrial strategy. It is a direct challenge to the global order. It says, we will develop with our own genius, on our own terms. But genius is a tricky thing to verify. The whispers against Chikambutso are loud. Former associates have questioned where the funding for his prototypes originates. Journalists point to the lack of independent, verifiable testing of his devices under controlled conditions. The black box nature of his inventions, where the core technology is secret, fuels skepticism. Is he a visionary being suppressed by jealous institutions? Or is he a brilliant showman, selling hope where engineering fails? This is the razor's edge Troy walks. 
His opponents, both within and outside Burkina, watch with folded arms. They wait for the moment this venture fails, to point and say, See? This is what happens when you reject reason and embrace mysticism. They frame it as a desperate turn to pseudoscience, proof that the junta is unfit to govern. Yet, in Ouagadougou, the perspective is fundamentally different. Trore is not a physicist, he is a revolutionary pragmatist. He may not care if Chikambutso's generator taps into zero-point energy or harnesses stray electromagnetic waves. He cares about one thing. Does it work well enough? Does it produce usable, affordable electricity for a remote military outpost where diesel convoys are ambushed? Can it power a village clinic's refrigerator for vaccines without relying on a grid that is constantly sabotaged? In the context of survival, a slightly mysterious generator that works is infinitely more valuable than a perfectly understood theory that cannot be implemented. This partnership is also a powerful piece of political theater. It signals a complete break from the past. By embracing Chikambutso, Traore is telling the Burkinabi people, we are not beggars at the world's table. We are pioneers. It fosters a sense of defiant pride, a crucial ingredient for national morale in a time of war. It tells the youth that their future is not in migrating to Europe, but in building a new Africa right here. The potential rewards are astronomical. If, and it is a monumental if, Chikambutso's technology can be industrialized at any meaningful scale, Burkina Faso could leapfrog decades of infrastructure development. It could become the epicenter of a green energy revolution born in Africa, for Africa. Military patrols could use silent, all-terrain electric vehicles that don't need vulnerable fuel lines. Rural electrification could happen not with thousands of miles of expensive, attack-prone power lines, but with localized, decentralized units. Sovereignty would be built from the ground up, literally powered by it. But the risks are just as profound. Financially, the junta is directing scarce resources into a high-risk venture. If it fails, the loss will be measured in missed opportunities and strengthened opposition. Credibility is also on the line. Trore has staked his reputation as a clear-eyed leader on the claims of an unproven inventor. The international community, already hostile to the junta, would use a failure to further isolate Burkina Faso. They would paint the entire nation as gullible, undermining Traoré's central message of self-reliance and intelligent defiance. Then there is the security risk. The factories proposed to build these technologies would be high-value targets for terrorist groups. What would an attack on such a symbol of national hope do to morale? Conversely, success would be a devastating blow to the insurgents' narrative. The drama unfolds in a nation where time is a luxury no one has. While diplomats argue and scientists debate, Burkinabi soldiers are fighting and dying. Villagers are burying their loved ones. The need for a solution is not academic. It is visceral and urgent. This urgency is what fuels Troyes Gambit. He is playing a game of high-stakes chess on a board shaking with explosions, and he has moved his queen to a square no one predicted. Maxwell Chikambutso is now more than an inventor. He is a geopolitical pawn and a potential savior. His every move is watched. His every claim is dissected. He carries the weight of a nation's hope on his shoulders. Back in Zimbabwe, he speaks of divine inspiration, of a mission to liberate Africa through technology. In Burkina Faso, they hear a language of liberation they understand all too well. The partnership is a mirror held up to the world. It reflects the deep frustration of a continent rich in resources and intellect, yet perpetually told to wait, to follow, to comply. Trore and Chikambutso, in their own ways, are saying, no more waiting. Whether this is the beginning of a magnificent breakthrough or a tragic miscalculation is a story still being written. The factories are not yet built. The generators are not yet powering cities. The world watches, some with hope, many with scorn. But in the dusty streets of Ouagadougou, a different sentiment is growing. It is the sentiment of a people who have decided to bet on themselves, no matter how long the odds. They have been left in the dark for too long. Now, they are willing to follow a controversial light, if it is the only one they themselves can switch on. Ibrahim Troyes' gambit is more than an energy deal. It is a statement of identity.
It is a declaration that in the 21st century, sovereignty will be powered not by oil, gas, or foreign goodwill, but by the courage to believe in the impossible. For Burkina Faso, a nation born from revolution, this might just be the most revolutionary bet of all. The Sahara Sun watches, waiting to see what will emerge from the heat of this daring dream.